This is the 2500 single acting meat and mix and dispense system. It's a piston cylinder displacement system and that there's a cylinder dedicated to the resin side and the cylinder dedicated to the catalyst side. And the single acting is typically used when you have a wide ratio material and it's also heavily filled. And the single acting nature of this allows you to empty the cylinders at the end of the shift or the day and send the material back to the tank to be agitated and processed uh, the following day. An important feature of this system is that it has one continuous shaft onto which the pistons for the metering cylinders are attached. So if the catalyst piston moves, the resin piston moves, and you don't get phasing as, a, as it is seen in side-by-side -side systems. So whatever happens on the shaft happens on both sides. So it's an inline piston design. The material that this machine is processing is about 100 to 12 by volume ratio. The resin side is heavily filled and high viscosity. The catalyst side is unfilled and watery viscosity. So you have quite a difference of disparity in the, in the viscosities of the material. So what we'll do, for a couple of reasons, is heat the resin side to drop the viscosity, which makes it easier to mix and makes it easier to process. It also makes it easier to degas, which is something you have to do on a wide ratio of material. Otherwise, the watery side won't compress, and the resin side, if it's not degassed, will compress. And you can see you'd be off ratio with a one side compressible and the other side not compressible. We're heating in five different zones. We're going to heat the tank and proportionally control the tank so you can maintain a separate temperature there. We're going to heat the hose from the tank to the resin cylinder. We're going to heat the resin cylinder independently. We're going to heat the dispense hose and we're going to heat the dispense head up by the mixer. So we have five different uh, independently controlled heat zones on the system. The flow is controlled with the air cylinder on this end. By increasing the pressure on the drive cylinder, you increase the pressure on the fluid, which increases the output at the mixer. By decreasing that, it slows the system down and you decrease the output at, at the mixer. So the resin tank is heated. There are heat coils embedded in heat compound in the belly of the tank on the outside. The thermocouple down in there will sense the temperature of the heat and proportionally control the cow rod heaters. There's an analog temperature probe, which is actually in the material, which gives you the temperature, actual temperature of the material in the tank. We have a vacuum pump connected here, as I discussed, which allows us to vacuum the material and degas it before processing. You only need to do that when you fill the tank. Other than that, the tank can be kept uh, as it is uh, and put under pressure for processing. There's a 30 RPM electric motor agitator with paddles in the bottom. What tends to happen when you heat the material is the, the fillers will fall out into the bottom of the tank, which you don't want to happen because you'll be processing just filler. So there are blades inside the tank that slowly rotate to keep the fillers in suspension. So the question is, how does this system fill and dispense? Well, there are two rotary valves. There's a rotary valve for the resin side that fills and empties the resin cylinder. And there's a rotary valve here for the catalyst side that fills the catalyst cylinder. And those are operated by a single actuator. Describe to you how the rotary valve plays in the process uh, of meter mixing this material. This line is coming in from the tank. So material flows in to the rotary valve through this hose into the metering cylinder and it slowly fills the metering cylinder. Once that metering cylinder is full, the valve rotates 90 degrees, it isolates 
the feed in and connects the cylinder to the dispense hose. So what we're doing here is rotating 90 degrees back and forth. In the dispense position, these two are connected. In the fill position, these two are connected. So once the system's full, the actuator rotates the valve 90 degrees. It then connects this cylinder, which is now material that's on ratio to the dispense hose. The same thing is happening on the catalyst side simultaneously. So they fill, once they're full, then they dispense, and then they fill, and then they dispense. So the rotary valve is the key to filling and dispensing metering cylinders. For repeatable and highly accurate shot control, we've included a, a linear encoder here. And what that encoder does, it watches the piston movement. And there's 1,200 scribes per inch on the encoder. So as the piston moves, it records that movement to a controller here. And there are set points on this controller where you establish your shot size here. The encoder records the piston movement. When it reaches the set point, it shuts the dispense head off. So each time you press the foot pedal, it actuates the machine, the machine moves, and the encoder records the movement and shuts off at the set point. That is the linear encoder for shot size control. On the dispense end of the system, particularly in wide ratios, we'll use a dispense manifold that has two valves attached. And what this allows us to do is throttle the flow individually for the two components. Because what might tend to happen is, due to wide ratio and due to the fillers in one side, one material may start entering the static mixer before the other. So to prevent that, we can throttle these valves and add additional back pressure to whichever side is necessary so you get simultaneous entrance into the static mixer. The static mixer is plug flow. So what flows in is what flows out, and if you have what's called lead lag or phasing, and the catalyst enters first, well then the catalyst is gonna flow down out through the mixer tip, and you'll get soft spots every time you turn the machine on and off. So we have these two valves to prevent phasing or lead lag on the system. Bleeding a wide ratio system is one of the most important parts of setting the system up. Because if you have air in one side or the other, and you have a ratio of 100 to 7 or 100 to 10, any amount of air in one side or the other is going to cause, cause you to be off ratio. So what we've included on this system is a prime valve. And what that allows you to do is connect the fluid in the tank, bypass the metering section, and go directly to the dispense hose. That allows you to put 100 PSI in the tank directly into this hose to force the air out of the hose. Once the prime is done, you go to the run position, and now the catalyst will flow through the system in an, in an orderly fashion. But once the tanks are filled or refilled, you need to go through the prime and the degas. Now the degassing and the priming are only necessary if one you run out of material or upon first startup. Otherwise the bleed, the bleed or the prime valve isn't used. Once you've bled the dispense hose and the hose from the tank to the metering you don't have to do that again. When you add fresh material in the resin tank you need to degas that each time you fill the tank. Or if you run out of material and you have to fill the tank. So that's the 2500 single acting. Two cylinders with the respective volume, same as what's in the data sheet for the material you're processing. In this instance, it's 100 to 7. The machine reciprocates, it fills, and it dispenses on demand. It fills, and it dispenses on demand. We can heat the system, we can heat individual components, we can heat both sides of the system, 
depends on what the chemistry is that you're yeah. in the process. You can add a linear encoder for shot control, and that gives you a really high repeatability on your shot size. The system can be fed from 55 gallon drums, 5 gallon containers, 15 gallon containers, 10 gallon containers, or totes. Each system is wet tested here at Ashby Cross prior to shipment. The customer usually joins us during the wet test and we can run product. We can prove the ratio of the machine and the flow rates. So this system is about to be wet tested now.